Today I'll show you the best country to form Italy. It's not Naples, nor Milan, it's not Florence either. But in the north of Italy, there's the tiny Saluzzo. Yes, this one province duchy is capable of quickly conquering the entire Italian region. And in today's episode, I'll show you how to do it. Hello imperialists, this is Lucas. This small duchy is located between Savoy and Provence. It's not the wealthiest, nor does it have a gigantic army. But what it does have are very strong national ideas, increased infantry strength and aggressive expansion reduced by 15%. We are also a member of the Holy Roman Empire, therefore we feel relatively safe. Provence and France are unlikely to attack us. It's a different story with Savoy or Milan. Our initial ruler is mediocre. The air is weak and very much so. To be honest, I will quickly be changing the form of government to an elective monarchy. It's one of the better monarchies to start with currently. Our idea tree, I would like to say that it's somehow unique, but it's not. It is generic, designed for the minor Italian nations. Paradox didn't put much work into this one. Privileges for our states, currently only the most essential ones. We will be waging many wars in the beginning. I want to recover the crown land this way. That's why I need to watch the influence of individual estates. Standard trick for a cheaper military advisor. And speaking of advisors, well, I'm considering having only the one for diplomatic reputation. But luckily, a royal marriage with Austria is available for the take. An alliance should follow soon after. Especially since our neighbor, Savoy, is a rival of France. I was quite lucky here. So maybe we should also rival Savoy. It might also make it easier to secure an alliance with Austria by signaling that we feel threatened by Savoy. It's very close. We're sealing a royal marriage with Austria and the alliance will be on December 12th. Luckily, Austria hasn't taken as many alliances as usual. That's why I can forge one with it. Do I want to join the Genoese League? Probably not. What I do want is definitely an alliance with the Pope. The alliance with Austria is therefore very important because it allows us to conquer within the empire itself before the year 1460. Admittedly, I'll still try to limit this, but just in case, we can do it. However, my first target is Provence. No matter, our second ally will be Milan, who is also an ally of Provence. What bad luck. But luckily, thanks to this, we can now complete the prince's government mission. And after hiring advisors, I can even undertake the mission to educate my court. But not to rely completely on these advisors, I'm getting rid of them for now. We'll keep only the military advisor. Aha! Opportunity! I'm not sure what happened here, but I'm declaring war on Provence. Oh, they didn't move the capital. How come? The worst part now is that my armies need to hunt down this smaller Provencal army and their their personal union army. We need to do this to start besieging their province. And I got the rest of the Provencal army. Totally shattered. Yes, you see correct. I don't have any cavalry at all. And look, I just defeated their army and everyone wants to take advantage of Provence. But our first war is behind us three provinces from Provence taken. 40% aggressive expansion. So I won't conquer much more for a while. And money, the Pope hates me. Well, it doesn't bode well for a great love story here. What's this modifier that Austria is the emperor of the Holy Roman Empire? I've seen it for the first time. I mean, it was there before, but it was enough to have a claim on the territory for it to disappear. Did Paradox mess something up again? Let's integrate the Provencal territories into ours. We definitely want to establish our administration here. I don't know what adding provinces to the Holy Roman Empire gives, but I'm doing it. But Castile wants an alliance again, absolutely, will reduce autonomy in the provinces. And we know, well, we definitely want the Occitan culture to be acceptable. No, because that's the French one. So this is the only one that we will not automatically accept except when we become an empire. All right, let's take the mission to expand our army. Okay, I still have to humiliate one of our neighbors and right now I can only humiliate Savoy. Maybe with Milan's help. Ooh, they have forces twice as large. I can't believe what I'm doing, but I'm defeating their armies one by one. Just look, I lost 12,000 soldiers. My opponents, 28,000. What am I even doing here? I'm just one technology level ahead and that might turn the tide of war because somehow I can call Austria into this war and Milan has left the war. And honestly, I'm even pleased about it. This was of course 100% planned. I totally forgot to reform our country into an elective monarchy, which I'm doing now. And it raises a good question. Do I need to get rid of the heir to the throne in an elective monarchy or don't I? We'll see. From Savoy, we're taking just these two provinces, money and war reparations. And of course, I want to humiliate them. I conquer so few lands because in a moment in the year 1460, these Italian countries will leave the HRE. And then these provinces would cost me not 26 aggressive expansion points, but only about 13. 14. So it's worth waiting with the conquests. Finally, I can afford these level 1 advisors and to grant a slightly larger number of privileges. Honestly, it's the first time I'm seeing this monument. I must have missed it. All right, now we have a moment where we need to focus on diplomatic actions because I'll want to develop our first espionage ideas here. Of course, we need to upgrade our administration to the fifth level. 
and always around March, at the beginning of 1460, the Shadow Kingdom occurs. In this case, if the Emperor is an AI, it always lets the Italian duchies go. It will never try to extend their decision period. And since we're one of those Italian duchies, we can decide if we leave the Empire or stay. We have an alliance with the Emperor, so we would want to stay in the Empire, because then we don't get such diplomatic penalties and you know what I mean. But the Prestige, no, and from what I see only two duchies remain, mine and actually the Republic of Luca. Very well, I'm happy. Genoa will be cheap, and since I'm still part of the Empire, of course I'm taking an alliance and royal marriage with Bergen, because when that prince dies, Maria who's here will ascend to the throne, and I'll have a chance to acquire all of Burgundy's territory. And I won't lie, that would simplify things. At this point, I'm seriously considering the second government reform, either to benefit from the Empire's ministers, or to burden the aristocracy with additional taxes. I think I'll go with the taxes, they'll come in handy. After all, the army needs to be paid! Although, okay, I don't have that much in taxes, we should seize the opportunity with the entire Genoese army here and attack this country. Because remember, Genoa is one of the best trade provinces in one of the best trade regions. Yes, it's worth conquering. I'm counting on these troops being defeated, and it didn't work. 474 days of besieging this fortress. Who's ever heard of such a thing? Where can I file a complaint about this? The good thing is that now we're conquering our cultural group. So these provinces are administratively joined much faster. I'm also starting to earn. So I'm upgrading my ministers to be more effective. It's probably not worth it to upgrade this 58 year old. I'll upgrade him and then he'll probably die. But the 31 year old, we can definitely upgrade. I can't believe it. I attacked Siena. I thought the emperor would be enough to beat Venice. But just a moment ago, the entire Austrian army was destroyed by the Venetian forces. Aha, a difference in technology. Well, that explains a bit. But I think we should manage now. And good, Venice falls. So I'll allow myself to plunder their coffers. Because look at all this money, that could be mine. The first development of the era, aggressive expansion which we currently have reduced by 50%. Yes, I need to increase prestige. How lucky we're getting an outstanding minister, who will also improve our relations with all countries. I don't know if you're aware, but this statistic speeds up the entire process of reducing the aggressive expansion we already have. Look, I have 2.7 now, I hire a minister. 3.1, there you go. I wonder if I'll be able to introduce faceting here in Siena, meaning this new glass production method, which will give us a significant bonus to this province as we want to expand our sphere of influence in Italy as quickly as possible. Oh, how kind of them. And I won't lie, conquering Rome would be truly tempting here. But I would have to be an elector or the current pope. Do I really have to give them all my money? What nobility? And yes, for facetting to occur, you need to meet these conditions. And we've got it. You won't believe it, but I indebted Florence so much that they dismantled the fortress. In the meantime, of course, let's build markets everywhere. Well, not everywhere, in places like these. Because Italy thrives on trade after all. And now I'm pulling a little trick. I've taken all of Savoy, and additionally, for free. I get Geneva for zero aggressive expansion? Yes, Geneva. Because when you take over the senior, his vassals become yours. Ooh, did Burgundy want these territories? Oops, as I'm about to focus on expanding my country, let's implement church taxes. Workshops first. Oh, ran out of money. Time to expand our army with artillery, and from what I remember, I think we need six units for a sensible siege progression level. I'll check during the first siege, I can't remember this, and I've been playing this game for 10 years. I'll tell you honestly, I'm shocked at how I'm not accumulating aggressive expansion overall, because basically only Venice has some, but a larger country like Austria. Austria, none. France. Oh, France has some. I looked wrong, but in five years it will drop to zero anyway, so we can just attack again. This is also a good time to proclaim the golden age of Saluzzo. Everything is 10% cheaper. I love these mountain fortresses here, especially if the opponent is sharp enough to march into them. And I can hide my army there. And with the combat penalties, they get a total stack wipe. And yes, the Duchy of Milan vanishes. Wow, I've grown a bit. In fact, so much that I've become one of the strongest countries in the world. With the completion of espionage ideas and, of course, hiring the right advisor, it's very easy to vassalize nearly all the smaller duchies in Italy. I'll be honest, it's the first time I've created so many small vassals within Italy. Quite an enjoyable game, a bit of a different conquest than usual, but this is only possible due to this idea development. Honestly, I usually really enjoy playing with offensive ideas, but when I saw that there's this development here, a 50% reduction in the cost of marking territorial claims, and here again we have the cost of all actions reduced by 20%, accelerated generation plus 50%. This can work quite well, only here I'd have accelerated sieges by 20% and increased army discipline. Tough choice. 
Which one would you choose? I'll tell you, these vassals are very handy. In fact, I don't have to do anything. That moment when you devour Florence and no one cares. Excommunicated? Really? I mean, it wouldn't have benefited me earlier, but you know, always a good reason to complain. I'm really curious about the cause of the Franco-Neapolitan War. Luckily, I can check. A war of unification? Wait, wait, no. They have different dynasties. Does France now have a union over Naples? I need to play as that country eventually. Honestly, I've got an incredible opportunity because Venice got excommunicated and maybe Saluzzo will ignite the First World War. Considering how many countries will participate here, yes, even propaganda might not help us. First, I struck at Venice itself to claim these territories for myself because you know Austria also wants these territories. Oh no, we need to relieve Vienna. All right, don't join that battle, thank you. Vienna is saved. And in fact, I won't want anything from Hungary in this war. So it's the first country I'm attacking and will probably take out just for the money. Seriously, another military advisor of mine died. And I must admit, I'm very pleased. How Spain nicely bites into France here. Because French troops are in Naples, maybe? They were in Sicily a moment ago. Honestly, Hungary is my favorite country to farm money from. Quite large, with hopeless fortresses, easy to bypass. The capital can be taken easily. Great stuff! Leonardo da Vinci. Well, I won't complain, but I won't hire him. Ah, this is likely the end for France. Here's the last Venetian army. No sign of the French ones, but there should be 40,000 troops somewhere. Aha, that clarifies things. I also completely missed the Burgundian event. Event. Burgundy itself is under the Palatinate, and I won't hide that I am somewhat keen on weakening France. So, I'll want to besiege all its territory to take as much money from them as possible and release Naples. I'm just making sure I have all the provinces here, unfortunately, except for Venice. Yes, I didn't capture the most valuable Venetian province. It's also time to end my alliance with the papacy, because we need to conquer all those territories for ourselves. And let's also work on improving relations with my vassals to the maximum. We'll start integrating them slowly. Finally, remember that weak heir of mine? Yes, he rules now. He's 61. I didn't kill him. And that's because I have such a great heir waiting. I'll be catching up. With his death, we have the opportunity to choose rulers. Very good rulers, to be honest. I kind of remember that there were always guaranteed stronger rulers here in the past. All right, but I know I want to keep this one. So we choose Francesco. And colonialism has appeared, this time in England. Wow, it's been a long time since I've seen it there. I'm hiring a level 3 advantage advisor with discipline. It's a bit risky since it might trigger a very powerful event related to discipline. It's better to save it for the quite challenging wars since there's a chance for it to occur. All right, maybe not high, but it's also not so low that it won't happen. And it's only once per game. I'm attacking Mantua to reset the peace period with Venice. Wow, they have quite a few allies. Let's finish off the remnants of the Venetian fleet. It all went down to the bottom. With Venice, I'm taking a white piece, so I can attack them again in five years. The funniest thing is that my allies will still have a peace period with it. Not for five years, but about ten. Why did you have to enter that fort? I'm just crushing you. It's time. Time to leave the empire. Why is it worth doing? Because we are a very large country. We have almost 600 developed. And it's not fitting for us to be just a duchy. And remember when you belong to the empire and are not an elector. Your rank cannot be higher than a duchy. So we leave the empire. We don't need to conquer within its borders anymore. And at the same time, our ruler, Francesco, is crowned king. And thanks to that, we can conquer a lot more. I must admit that I've really taken to the espionage ideas. Practically in five years, I have claims on one, two, three, four, seven provinces. Quite nice. Oh, Hungary falls under the Ottomans. Hey, this Ottoman is getting strong. All right, I also build up courts all over Italy. They were very useful. And again, from 600 to 410. I've also established states everywhere. Decreased autonomy, economically it looks weak. Oops, weak. But we haven't conquered all of Italy yet, so it doesn't count. How come I had 150 gold before? Ah, cultures. All right, once we're an empire, it'll improve. Because when we don't accept cultures, but actually within our cultural group, we get small penalties. It's time for the first war with Rome. Everything except Rome, actually. Because the papal state itself is too large, having the 117 war score. But still, Rome is the last province we should conquer, having captured all of Italy. Unless earlier, either we formed Italy or I have a religion other than Catholic. Because if we conquer Rome as a Catholic country, we get significant penalties to diplomatic reputation. And something else, I don't remember. Generally, the whole Catholic world reacts very badly when a Catholic conquers Rome. The Pope's own allies are even worse than he is. So they don't pose any problem, we just have to. Sadly conquer them, I mean capture their fort and you know, what happened here? What's with the Palatinate? Ah, they inherited Burgundy. I conquered almost all of the Papal State. And it doesn't lead to a coalition. Wow, I think I've found my new favorite ideas. 
the Protestant Reformation has begun and I'll likely convert to Protestantism. It's quite a nice modular one. Additionally, we get quite a bit of money. Only my prestige will decrease, which will hurt us, but we'll manage. Initially, for 10 years, we have a conversion book, so it's best to start with those provinces that have the most religious unity, and their conversion takes the longest. Besides, it's also good to get an additional missionary for this purpose. We obtain the rest of Naples, and Venice also conquered. 81% share, and I put a merchant here to collect trade. True, we get a slight penalty for trade collection, but at this moment, it doesn't matter. We attack France. Our goal will be to capture the remaining provinces for a neat border, the entire area of Savoy. The aspects of faith that I chose are, of course, for now the bishop, to convert our provinces from Catholicism to Protestantism faster, and the justific conflict, which again reduces my aggressive expansion, but also for 10 years reduces the war score cost against heretics. I'm also pondering a lot about which ideas to choose as the third set, maybe diplomatic, and then pair it with humanist. Because look at the combo we would get for improving relations, and on top of that, a policy, meaning we'd accrue very little aggressive expansion. And when we already have it, we'd reduce it very quickly. Or perhaps innovative. Apart from better advisors, we'd get faster sieges, which would mean that at this moment I'd be besieging a fort not in the base 28 days, but around 16 to 14. Which ideas would you choose as the third? Let me know. The French troops don't stand a chance against us. We're advancing further into the heart of their country and soon we'll strike at the capital. If I had to point out what I love the most in this region, it would be the forts, our mountain forts. This is our Maginot Line. These fortifications, they are practically impenetrable. Oh god, I got everything wrong here. Why do I need this fort? Let's demolish it. And look, we plunge into the French army, which has a minus two, and totally annihilate them, right? Do we annihilate them? Well, not really, but it could have been better, never mind. These fortresses are impossible to conquer. The war ended with our incredibly massive victory. Yes, it's a pity not to release Toulouse and to release Gascony. Actually, these two vassals have territorial claims on practically the whole south of France. Let me tell you, I'm a bit tempted to make a second episode from our Saluzzo run, where the goal would be either the creation of the Roman Empire before the year 1600. Maybe it could be achieved or the conquest of all of Germany before the year 1600. Let me know in the comments if you'd like something like that. Meanwhile, Rome falls. Its control gave me a third missionary. And we have our beautiful Saluzzo on December 10th, 1524, with the possibility of forming Italy. We get entirely new missions, and honestly, I've never played with them before. However, we get Italian ideas, which are also very powerful. But it's hard for me to say if I prefer them or the Saluzzo ideas. For conquest, probably the Italian ones, and Italy itself, once unified, looks quite impressive. Just just like this colonial empire. In this episode, I show how to have over 20 colonies, each of which sends us gigantic amounts of golden arms.